Hello and welcome to the special extended edition of the SX Mini Class M review. Um, now this version is the full version. Um, I had to heavily cut and edit the uh, the version that was seen in the show on Wednesday night. So basically this is everything from start to finish. <clears throat> um, there obviously were going to be a few things missed, uh, left out on the actual show because this review is just so long. Uh, in order to really appreciate the actual device, I needed to do a, a longer version. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, this is the full version of the SX Mini Class M review. And as a reminder, you can watch us all on Vapor Trials TV on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday nights. So, uh, sit back and enjoy. Okay, so here's the SX Mini uh, sat in its little box. So, It'll come and it's got a sort of a plastic sleeve, frosted sleeve over it. Oh, we won't be needing that anymore, will we? So we'll chuck that to one side. And you can see it comes in a, an attractive white box. It's got a little seal here which you need to split. Uh, not much on the back, just telling me the colour, where it's made, and the website. So uh, let's just pop the lid. And inside we've got a little envelope which contains a couple of things. It will contain uh, a warranty card and a user manual. It's quite a comprehensive user manual, shows you how to get through all the menus, uh, but I'll be showing you that anyway. Uh, the device itself, obviously, and the little box here, and that contains just a, uh, a mini USB cable. Uh, that's used for charging and uh, firmware updates if one is made available. So here is what we're interested in. Uh, it's quite a weighty device, it feels very, very solid. Um, it's got a very nice smooth finish to it, it does feel very nice in the hand, uh, but more on that later. So we can see there it says SX Mini, and that apparently is trademarked on the bottom, and I need to adjust my focus for this. There we go. On the bottom then, it, uh, it says SX Mini M Class, powered by Yihi SX350J. Uh, and what we can see here, excuse the lighting, if I can adjust that in any way. Not particularly, no. Uh, you can see here is the battery uh, cover and there's four venting holes there. There's a couple of uh, screw heads there. And on the top, on the top, what do we have here? We have uh, an adjustable 510, well, spring-loaded 510 connector. We have the uh, the actual plate where the atomizer will sit, and that is actually 23 millimeters in diameter. It is ever so slightly beveled on the edge. Uh, and I'll continue in the tour, and I'll also adjust the focus yet again. Auto focus is a pain, so I have to do it manually. Continuing the tour, then we have the fire button. We have uh, some up and down uh, buttons here, and we have a mini USB port. Uh, again, the actual finish on this is very nice. It's lovely and smooth. Uh, every single edge has been beveled. Uh, I don't know if you can really make it out on camera, but even down to these corners here are nice and beveled off. It's wonderfully smooth, it really is. It feels like a quality piece of kit. Now, on the 510 connector, uh, as I did say, it is spring-loaded, so let's give it a quick demonstration with a screwdriver. I have to hold it at an angle just because otherwise you won't be able to see. But uh, yeah, that pushes in quite nicely. There's uh, four slots here for airflow for anything that requires uh, airflow through the actual 510 connector itself. Not many things do these days, but it's nice to have the option. Um, now, inside you can remove the uh, the battery cover with a coin or as I've got here a particularly large flat head so uh, let's just unscrew that in fact I can probably undo that with my fingers now at this point now this is predominantly a stainless steel construction uh, I believe this to be uh, no it's not aluminium that, that feels like steel to me now there's no spring on this side of the fence here at the bottom however if you were to look inside you can just about make out uh, as a spring in the top there so that's where your adjustment comes into play and you'll notice as well the actual battery tube itself is copper so that will require some cleaning every now and again because uh, we do know copper can tarnish 
So yeah, what you do, obviously, you uh, pop your battery in. Now I'm going to use an LG uh, LG battery here. It does require a battery with a minimum of a 30 amp draw. It will work with other batteries, but uh, you are limited what you can do, and more on that later. So what you do is you simply just screw this in. Let's try and get an angle so you can see what I'm doing. So you screw this in, and I'll just knock the camera, didn't I, because I'm a clumsy git. And this will screw right down, and the spring will come into play. So you can screw this quite flush, which it almost is there, not quite. Or you can just screw it all the way up. There we are, and that's where it stops. So there we go. And if I give it a few presses now, one, two, three, four, five, it turns on, let's put it right way up. It says SX Mini, SX350, register trademark, and then it'll power off. But now we've got here the actual display. So, uh, yeah, okay, so that's cut now to uh, the actual menu itself then, shall we? So in this uh, section here, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the display itself. So as you can see, I don't have an atomizer on here at the moment, so it will say check atomizer. So what we got here then, we've got uh, 45 watts. We have 0, 0.00 volts. We have a battery meter. We have currently no ohmage, but that's the reason because we don't have a battery on here. Uh, 4.20 volts, and we have a long number there with a J next to it. Now what that is, is your joules meter. Uh, the SX Mini here, it differs from, um, I'm gonna use the DNA 40 comparison a lot because, well, that will become apparent. Uh, but it differs on the sense that it, it uses joules um, in the temperature mode as opposed to watts, but the joules also come into play later on as well. And you also see there, you can't really make it out, but it says M2 and standard. Now what that M is, you've got memory bank, you have four or is it five memory banks uh, in which to store settings, and then standard there, well, you've got another, you've got a further few settings there, you have soft, standard, powerful and powerful plus. What that basically adjusts is your ramp up time. So really in order to actually take this any further, I need to put an atomizer on here. So this is not a nickel coil, this is a standard canfold coil atomizer. So uh, the actual threading on this is lovely, it does all fit down quite nicely. So now if I fire it, and you can see there, the ohms is uh, updated to 0 0.79, and the joules counter has gone up now to 31.5, and as I fire this, you can see that keeps on going. Now, when you actually replace the battery, the joules meter will reset. But all the time, all the while you've got uh, the same battery in there, this is a count up. So you can use this as, should we say, an odometer, uh, much like a mileage meter in your car, where you would uh, you, you 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 could get a gauge of how many joules your battery has provided. Uh, now, what joules is is a measurement of work done or work to be done. So basically you can say that my battery has outputted X number of joules and you can use that really to test the health of your battery but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more later. So, in uh, menu wise then, so if I give it three clicks now, that will lock the device, okay? And uh, let's wait for that display to go off. Now if I fire it, it's locked and it's not firing so I need to give it a further three clicks. And then you just see the quick unlock symbol and the way it went. Now, the actual menu, five clicks. Okay, so what we got here, we have, well, adjustment, exit, bypass, system, link, display left, power and dual, and the adjustment again. Now, you can adjust this as a gravity sensing device however because of the orientation i've got this camera i can't really do it because this is laying flat um, my hands are on my desk here um, but basically if i was to hold this that way round i could adjust the actual uh, measurement uh, the, the the actual settings using gravity 
However, you do have the option of using these buttons as well. So let's go back into the menu. Now what we can do, we can adjust the wattage. Now this is in power mode and it will go up to a maximum of 60 watts, as you can see there. Okay, it does not round robin, but it does accelerate and if I was to go the other way, you see it actually starts to speed up. Okay. Now there is a further gotcha in adjusting it from this menu as well, um, but we'll get there in a bit as well. So let's put that down to 45 as where it was. Actually no, let's put that to 50 because that can then demonstrate the, uh, the menu a bit better. That will do. So if I click again I can go to exit, so if I was to press either of these buttons that would actually exit the menu. Bypass, now what that does, it makes it behave much like a mechanical mod. So let's put that on, click through. Um, and go to exit, it's now in bypass mode. So what that does, that's outputting the power of the battery and you can see there it's actually outputting 4.06 volts and not the 4.2 as one would possibly expect from a fully charged battery. However that gives you a fairly good indication that well as soon as you apply a, a load to a battery you're going to get sag. Anyway, that's moving beyond a bit. I've just locked it, right so Let's turn it off bypass mode. It's not, not a mode I'm going to use very often. System on and off. If I was to put that to off, it will turn off. It says bye bye. Now, five clicks, it will boot up again. There we go. So, exit, of course, exits the menu. Bypass we've covered. System on and off we've covered. Link. That is, you turn that on if you need to update the firmware. Uh, if you was to plug this into your PC at the moment, it would just have a power connection, and that's it. If you were to plug this into the PC after you've turned the link to on mode, you would have a power and data connection. Uh, so if you need to update the firmware, that's where you would go, but I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. No, I'm adjusting. Now, display. Uh, you can basically change the alignment of displays and right, or you can have it as auto, which will use the gravity sensor in in order to uh, change the orientation of the display, and that is my preferred method. However, for the purposes of this menu, just in case the gravity starts playing silly buggers, I want to have it in left mode, and that stays there on left mode. Power and dual mode. This is where you would change it between power or to, to variable wattage and temperature control mode. Okay. Now I currently have one here, just a canthal atomizer. Uh, so obviously I can't really put it into temperature control mode. So we'll get back to that in a moment. And is that covered them all now? Okay. Now if I will now put it into temperature control mode. Okay, now you'll get some further menu options here. So what we've got, we've got uh, a joules adjustment, uh, we have temperature adjustment, and we can choose between Fahrenheit or centigrade. Okay, I'm going to leave it in Fahrenheit because that's kind of what I'm used to working with now uh, in temperature control terms. Okay, so that is now covering the menu. And if I just go to the exit mode, there we go. Uh, so there's the exit. Now, you've already seen this firing in... Actually, no, I'm not going to go that that route yet because that's not really comprehensive enough. So let's put this back into power mode. Okay. What I want to demonstrate here... Uh, I've gone, gone past it. As you can see, this is now the 49.9 watts we actually popped it in in the uh, in the menu, and that is going to fire at 49.9 watts. Now, there's further options here. Uh, once we're on the, this display, if I was to hold down the down button, this will change the profile. So we have soft mode, standard, powerful, powerful plus. So what this translates to in soft mode, you've got a longer ramp up time and you lock it in by pressing this. You've got a longer ramp up time before it actually hits your uh, your desired wattage. Okay. 
and you can see that's putting 6.27 volts out to achieve the 49.9 watts on a 0.79 ohm coil. Okay, and you can also see there actually, this is a good demonstration, whilst I'm firing it, you can see the battery meter going up and down. What that's illustrating is the actual battery sag, so you've got real-time battery monitoring on here, which is a good thing. Uh, if your battery goes right down, um, and if the battery can't cope with this, it will put a little line through it, and it will say to check your battery, uh, which differs from the battery low uh, error message you'll get. Uh, battery low means that you just simply need to replace your battery if it's you know, it's charging up or whatever if if you get a check battery well what that means is the battery you've got really can't handle the actual load you're putting on the uh, on the battery you know due to your ohmage of coil or what have you so there's a nice little safety feature in that respect anyway moving on so again I change it to standard power 4 power 4 plus so all that does is basically I, I tend to leave it on standard but if I was putting on Powerful Plus, it basically hits that 49.9 watts straight off the bat. Uh, whereas soft mode, it'll take a couple of seconds to get to that, okay? So what else can we do here? Now, if we were to go to the Plus, we can change the memory. So there's five settings there. So memory one is 10 watts, memory two is 49.9, memory three is 30, memory four is 60, memory 5 or 60 these are settings I've been playing around with okay so here's the gotcha I'm currently on memory 5 and if I go back into the menu and I want to adjust the wattage oh, I've gone past it again right I'm gonna put that down to that 57.7 okay I'm gonna exit that so that currently is a 57.7 now I'm gonna change the memory again that was memory 5 now you'll notice there that memory 5 has gone back to 60 watts so in order to actually change what's stored in the memory I need to scroll to the memory by holding down the, the plus button so let's go to memory 5 and then press the minus button and that puts it to adjust and then I can use the plus and minus buttons to actually adjust the wattage in that memory bank okay so 57.9 and I press the fire button to lock it in. And now that is memory five is locked in at 57.9. So if I scroll through again, you will see memory one is 10, memory two is 49.9, memory three is 30, memory four is 60.0, memory five is 57.9. So it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get your head around it, it's fine. So, now we've now covered the uh, the actual device and its menu and we've seen it in, uh, in in the standard variable wattage mode so what I'm going to do now I'm going to pop this I'm going to adjust this down to say 40 watts so have I got a 40 watt setting on here you know what I've just been through them and I can't find them I'll tell you what let's have it on memory 3 which is 30 watts okay that'll do nicely and if I fire that I get 30 watts. Now I'm going to put this into temperature control mode. Okay. Now I'm trying, going to try and fire it. And it immediately say dry coil, no liquid. So, and I've just realized that this thing has been leaking all over my hand because I've had it on its side all this time. Never mind, I. Uh, right, now I need an atomizer that does have nickel coil on it. Okay, so 45 watts, or joules, should we say. That will fire quite happily. Now, this is one thing that I really don't like, is on the, uh, the DNA 40, it will automatically change between temperature control mode and variable wattage mode, depending on the actual atomizer you're popping on top of it. This will not do that. So I'm in temperature control mode now. And if I was to pop on
this atomizer which is a variable wattage that'll probably do it still stays in temperature control mode so I need to manually go in and change that to variable power mode okay and there we're happy but if I were to change this up now and pop on the the nickel coil you would reasonably expect this to go into temperature control mode wouldn't you not going to happen so there we go and I'll fire this low resistance it doesn't actually offer up the fact that it's a temperature controlled uh, it's a nickel coil so it, it can't change between so I need to manually go in here and put it into dual mode okay and now it'll fire however that's not the whole story what you really need to do once you actually put on a nickel coil you need to press both buttons together and I just messed that up because All right. press both buttons together and it says set resistance 0 0.068 that's what you need to do when you put on a oh, back down here you need to put on a, when you put on a nickel core you need to lock down a resistance so in ideal terms you would need to make sure that this is nice and cool and your atomizer is nice and cool they're at the same temperature and then you lock the lock the ohmage in okay so there we are i've got a 24.9 ohm uh, uh what uh, out uh, joules output oh i'm getting confused here okay so now let's talk actually i'm going to talk about that now i'll talk that about it in the actual vape time uh, part of it what we need to really do now we need to test the uh the temperature control function so uh another jump cut so here we are we're going to uh, test the temperature control so what i've got here i've got this set to 420 degrees fahrenheit uh 34.9 joules and as you can see there i've got a uh a nickel coil with uh, some rayon cotton fed, uh, threaded through it. Uh, now, I've chosen these settings, uh, 0 0.49 ohm coil, I don't know if I mentioned that, you can see there. I've chosen these settings specifically because I know at 420 degrees Fahrenheit on a DNA 40 that this, uh, this cotton will not burn. So uh, let's test. Well, we're getting some smoke. It is saying dry coil, no liquid, however. So that's good. It is cutting out. But we need to inspect this. Uh, and that is indeed burnt. So. Yeah. Um, that would certainly not happen on a DNA 40. So it, it is burnt. So... It does appear to cut out, but it doesn't seem to be reading the, uh, the temperature quite as accurately as the DNA 40 does. Uh, at least on this, you know, this is quite a quite a basic test. I've got to be honest. But um, okay, so what we're going to do now? I'll do a jump cut and uh, we'll test the uh, test the coil on the uh, with some liquid on. Here we go then, uh, same coil, re, uh, with a fresh bit of ray on in there, uh, and it's all nice and uh, moist now, so let's give that a fire. There we go, plenty of vapour there. I don't know if I blow on it there. Yeah, there's no problems there at all, that's, that's behaving exactly how I'd expect. And you see there, it's actually reading every so often above 420 which I'll put it to so you can see it getting there about 300 and, uh, 430 odd uh, I'm just going to keep firing it until uh, yeah, until the coil goes dry <laughs> you can see there is a good demonstration of the real time output on this display So the temperature limit has not yet cut in. I'm expecting it to any moment. Uh, 
but uh, no, not yet. Let's keep going. Yeah, I, I would have expected that to go by now. I need to look at that coil because uh, it doesn't appear to be burnt. I mean, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Let's keep firing. Let's check that coil. No, that seems to be alright. So I need to keep on firing until this thing cuts out. Ah, there we go. Yeah, dry coil, no liquid. So, let's, uh, let's pop this coil out and see what sort of state it's in. That's not too bad, to be honest. Um, it's certainly not as bad as it was when I when I burnt the uh, the cotton with uh, with no liquid whatsoever. Um, I I think that's acceptable. You know. So yeah, okay. I think that I think that will conclude this particular test. So here we go then. Here is the uh, the SX Mini M class or Class M in all its uh, vaping finery. And as you can see, it's performing quite nicely. So what I've got here then, I've got the uh, 0.06 ohm coil, uh, nickel coil, at 45 joules and uh, at 419 degrees Fahrenheit, which is comparable to the setting I would have on the DNA40. And it vapes really, really well. Now, as you saw in the uh, the the experiments I did with the temperature control mode, it doesn't fully protect from a dry burn. Uh, on uh, a coil there with a very dry wick, it still burnt the actual cotton. Uh, it was you know, completely dry, there was no liquid on it at all. But once you put liquid on it, it will project, pr project, protect you from, uh, from a dry, dry burn. You, you'll know you're, that you're out of juice long before that, that cotton actually melts or catches on fire or whatever it does you know before it actually burns so I'm gonna say that the temperature control does work as intended it's fine it's certainly much better than the temperature control on the uh, where is it the, uh, the smock m80 which didn't work at all this does work and it works well in practice it works fine there's nothing wrong with it at all uh, if you're going down to the level of tests where you're doing a, a, a burn on dry cotton, then the DNA 40 will, will trump it, no problem. So let's talk a little bit about the specs on this, shall we? Uh, let's move things out of the way, because I've got it all listed down here. The actual specs on this device then, so in temperature control mode, uh, you can output a minimum of five joules. I'll explain all this joules stuff in a minute, okay? It will output a minimum of five joules and a maximum of 50, okay? Uh, in voltage terms, it'll output a minimum of one volt and a maximum of 9.5. Okay. Um, the actual ohmage rating that it requires in order to operate in dual mode or temperature control mode, you require a, a coil somewhere between 0 0.12. That's not right. Now, I've got this off the spec sheet. That can't be right. It says 0 0.12 ohms to 1 ohm. Um, thing being, I've got this at 0 0.06 ohms. And it's working perfectly. I think they might have missed out a zero somewhere. Okay, right, so, uh, and you do require a minimum of a 30 amp battery. As I said in the close-up section, you, uh, you can use a lesser battery, but it will cut out and it will warn you your battery is not up to task. So that's a good thing. You've got a very, very low risk of venting your battery because this device will tell you ahead of time that your battery just can't handle it, okay? And it would stop working. 
So that's a good thing. Now in power mode, again I'm reading off the spec sheet here. Oh sorry, I forgot the temperature ranges. Um, so in temperature control mode, the minimum temperature is 100 degrees centigrade or 300 degrees, uh, sorry 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the maximum temperature it can reach is 300 degrees centigrade or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So that pretty much covers the temperature control side of things. Now in variable power mode or wattage mode, um, it will output a minimum of 5 watts and a maximum of 60 watts. So you can get more power out of it in, variable, uh, in wattage terms, in variable wattage mode than you can in temperature control mode. Okay. Presumably that's because it would work at a lower ohmage on temperature control mode. Now, the, min uh, the minimum voltage on power mode is 1 volt and the maximum is 9.5, so that's the same as the temperature control mode. Um, now, it does state here that in power mode the minimum ohmage is 0.08. So that's got me thinking that there's something wrong on the spec sheet here, <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, maximum ohmage is a three. So you've got a, a, a wide range there of atomizers it will fire. The recommended ohmage on the temperature control is 0 0.6 ohms, and in power mode it is 1.5 ohms. That's what it says on the spec sheet. In practice, that may be different. You know, it's down to personal fear, personal taste. And again, in power mode. 30 amps is your minimum battery power level, okay? So that's covered now this, this joules thing. Joules is, as I said, a measurement of work done or work to be done, okay? So that is the amount of output a battery needs, amount, amount of work a battery needs in order to achieve the, uh, the your, your, your desired effect. So in practical terms, you can think of joules the same way, at least in terms of this device, okay? You can think of, in practical terms, joules to be pretty much the same as wattage. So one joules equals one watt. So if, if you were to, say, have an atomizer and you want to vapor 40 watts in temperature control mode, rule of thumb is you'll set it to 40 joules, okay? You might need to set it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Again, you need to dial that into yourself and how you like it, okay? Now, I've got this set of 45 joules and it's fine. However, I will say that I find that a little bit confusing. Now, the, the DNA 40, of course, you set that in temperature control mode to wattage. That's it, you've got wattage and that's all you work with. And that makes it a lot easier for the end user. Uh, I think that this joules mode It'll only serve, serve to really confuse the end user. So that's a bit of a downside. Um, you know, it depends on how you look at it. Let's, let's put it this way, right? If a DNA 40 requires you to have a beard, it doesn't, but it's good fun to say it does. If a DNA 40 requires a beard for usage, to fully understand this requires a beard at least three inches long, okay? But if you stick with joules equals watts, you're not going to go far wrong, okay? It's going to work and it's going to be fine. So don't worry too much about that. So let's now cover the... Uh, I've actually prepared this review. It makes a change, doesn't it? Uh, there's a lot to cover in this review, see? So let's go over my plus and minus points here. Um, oh, hang on. Before we go that, I've actually put this gyroscope in uh, the display into automatic mode. So as you can see there, if I have it this way up, that's fine. And if I put it that way up, it's fine. I really like that. That's, that's a nice feature. You can turn that off and you can have it just left mode or right mode. But hey, why not have it on uh, automatic, eh? So that said, the gyroscopic adjustment is great. Um, but the problem I've got with it, and in fact I can demonstrate this now because I'm not in close yappy cam. Uh, if I go into the menu, you can see there, if I tilt it, the actual wattage adjusts. Which it should do. It certainly seems to be going up. Weird. Oh, and if I go that way. 
it will go down. So to basically flip it right over, it's a bit fiddly. Um, but if you hold it this way up, you can actually adjust it by hand as you would traditionally do so. I would like to be able to turn that feature off. Okay, so the gyroscope only does the orientation of the display, and that's all it does. I, I like that, but there's no option to do that, okay? Now, it is a hefty device. It feels it feels very solid. Uh, the finish on it is lovely. The, uh, there are varying colours of this available. Uh, well, they will be available. They weren't at the time of purchase when I purchased this one. Um, but I quite like it, the, uh, the, the the black finish here, and it's very smooth. It's textured, but very smooth. It, it'll, it'll afford you a decent grip. Um, uh, the actual finish is, is superb. It really is. There's not a sharp edge on it at all anywhere. The button is lovely to press. Uh, there's no sharp edges anywhere uh, on the button. Everything's beveled off. It's really, really nice. It's superbly made. Um, the actual action there where you screw the atomizer on, wonderful threading. Um, the battery cover again wonderful threading even down to the battery cover the actual corners of that are beveled off you know such is the attention to detail on this so i cannot fault the build quality whatsoever um now price point you're looking at 180 pounds which puts it in the same ballpark as the vapor shark rdna 40 hannah box mods things like that so i could I, uh, right, here's the thing, it is a very quality device and to my mind it's worth the money, it feels really good. It's worth the money more than this vapor, shot, uh, vapor flask is worth much more than this. Uh, well, it costs more than this and if I'm honest, this is far better built. It will take um, any battery I've put in it, it's, put, it's gone in fine. I've even gone into the, uh, and the biggest batteries I have are the Cenobores. They're not up to the task apparently, but I've put it in just to see if it fits, and if it's no problems at all. So any battery, and it's a nipple top as well, okay? Any battery that I've I've thrown at this, it will accept, okay? So no issues there whatsoever. So the build quality is superb. Um, it's a 23 millimeter build deck, so that might put some people off, but um, I mean, it's a 22 millimeter Atti, and to my mind, that looks fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, it does not switch between power control mode and temperature control mode automatically depending on the attitude you've got on it. That's a big downside as far as I'm concerned. That means I have to go into the menu and actually adjust things. I'm not happy with that. I would prefer it automatically go into power mode or temperature control mode, okay? Um, I haven't demonstrated it, but take it from me, the, uh, the battery safety on this is very good. If your battery's not up to the task, it will warn you. If your battery is running low, it will tell you again and you can just charge it up through the USB port or you can just quickly take the battery out and pop another one in. So that's a plus point there. Um, I've covered the fact it's temperature, it's, it's, it's comfortable to hold and it's wonderful, it really is. A magnificent thing to hold there. You can choose between Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, I prefer to use it in Fahrenheit because that's kind of what I've got used to with the DLA40s, even though the later model will also allow me that feature as well. Um, it's got a spring-loaded 510 pin, again that's another plus point. I like the profiles, uh, so I can I can adjust it. It's maybe first thing in the morning, I don't particularly want a harsh vape, but I can just drop it to the soft profile. And uh, later on in the day, and I'm a bit stressed, I can put it to the powerful plus profile, you know, so I can get a quicker hit. I like that. I also like the memory bank feature, so I can set in there quick settings, so I can have a 20 watt setting, I can have a 30 watt setting, I can have a 40 watt setting, I can have a 60 watt setting, or 50 arm temperature control mode. Um, I like that feature, so I can just quickly flick between the two. What I don't like is the fact that if I actually go and adjust the, uh, the, the, the output in the menu, that doesn't translate into, that doesn't save onto the profile, I actually have to go and change the profile separately. That's a downside. Um, swings and roundabouts there, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I would like it if I was, say, on memory profile number three and it was at 20 watts and I decided to go into the menu and change it to 30. I'd like it to be reflected in the profile and saved in there, but it is not the case. You have to change that separately. So that's a bit of a pain. Um, the Jules output isn't 
completely directly trans translatable to wattage, okay? So even though I said, yeah, you won't go far wrong, it's not 100% the same. So you will need to say, if you're used to vaping at 40 watts on an atomizer and you recoil it, and it's 40 watts on a DNA 40, well, that's to say you have a, a, a nickel coil on a DNA 40, and you have that at 35 watts, and that vapes really well. You pop it on this and put it at 35 joules, you're not gonna quite get the same output. So you would need to change that to what the, uh, but then that's basically finding your sweet spot. So it's not a big thumbs down there, but uh, you know, I would prefer if I just did away the whole joules thing entirely and just kept that as wattage. Uh, right, the fire button, uh, I briefly mentioned it, it feels nice. It does take a little bit of effort to actually use, far more so than many other devices where you just click it. On the plus side of that, it's very hard to actually accidentally click it. It's a very deliberate action. Um, but it does feel very solid. There's no hollow... I'll just put it to the microphone. You can probably hear that. There's no hollow sound to it. It feels very positive. There's no rattling in the device at all. You know, so it's good. Oh, I've locked it by pressing it three times. <laughs> um, another negative point actually would be the uh, when you put on a temperature controlled atty, you need to manually press. You may need to manually lock the ohmage into place. So you need to press both the fire, uh, both the up and down buttons at the same time. And that will read the image and you press the fire button and that locks it. Um, as opposed to the DNA 40 where you just pop an atomizer in, it just constantly pulls the thing and just sorts itself out over time. But I suppose that's one way of getting around the, uh, and it's been an issue for a lot of people with DNA 40, the new coil press up and down uh, message. That's confused a lot of people and how that works. So that is, I suppose, one way of actually combating that, that confusion. As you can see there, my is actually starting to get a bit dry. I can taste it and you can see the vapor output, so that's good. Um, it's a good demonstration there. I'm just going to top my Atty up. There we go. I dripped it back on. See? Temperature control does work. Um, yeah, so... I'm happy with this. Uh, I've got to be honest. It's it's a very good companion to the DNA 40s. And if you... here's the thing, actually, um, I know that the actual uh, board is available separately for the mod makers out there. It doesn't really come in any cheaper than a DNA 40. So you've got to, you've got to kind of work out where you want your money to go. Um, here's the thing. Now I know if I was to go and buy a DNA 40 board, I've got Evolve over in the US. I've got their technical support to back me up. Um, so, so long as I don't make a silly mistake, if the board is faulty, they will sort me out. I'm not entirely sure how that works in terms of Yihi and their uh, SX350J chip or board. Um, I don't know what the support's like, but I feel more confident in the support that Evolve will provide. However, this will output a higher wattage or joules than the DNA40 will. Not by much, uh, by a maximum of 20 watts, but yeah, that's, that, that's a make or break for some people. It is firmware upgradable by the end user, which is something the DNA 40 is not. So there's that comparison as well. If they release a new firmware of that, I'll just put it in link mode, pop it into my computer, and update the firmware. If they do that with the DNA 40, I'll either A, have to send it off to Evolve to, to swap out or whatever they do, or B, buy another board with the updated features on it. So, you know, that's again another another thing. <clears throat> so all in all then, would I recommend the SX Mini Class N? Yes, yes I would. Quite heartily in fact. It's a wonderfully built device. It's solid, it's nicely presented. It's got a ton of features on it. Um, maybe more than you re would really need. It's got some niggles. The menu is a little bit confusing to use uh, until you get your head around it. Um, but all in all, I uh, I would heartily, heartily recommend this. So finally, a non-evolved uh, temperature control device that actually works. Cheers.